Anderson and number 10, Georgia Nicholas, the captain. Good evening to all watching in Australia. A very warm welcome for joining our coverage today of the final group stage game of the IFCPF Women's World Cup. It is a big one today. The Combank Paramatildas taking on the only other undefeated team left in the competition, the United States of America. While both teams have locked themselves into the gold medal match that will take place on Tuesday, this is no dead rubber. With a place at the top of the group on the line after the USA drew with Japan won all on Saturday. You can see the starting five for the Paramatildas are on the pitch and ready to go. We'll take you through them now. So starting off, Georgia Bykoff, scorer of 13 goals so far. Ray Anderson for her first start of the tournament. Goalkeeper Caitlin Smith. Talia Blanchard slots back into defence. And Lainey Harrison up top with five goals so far. On the bench for your Paramatildas, we have goalkeeper Holly Saunders. 
Scorer of two goals so far, Nicole Christodoulou, Charlize Tran, co-captain Eloise Northam, and Matilda Mason. It is a pleasure to be joined on commentary once again today by Pararoo's legend, Chris Pine. Chris, one change to the Paramatildas today with Ray Anderson replacing Eloise Northam. In this, their third game in as many days, what do you make of the starting five? Oh, well, it's strong. It's strong. We've got um, we've got Laney up front, who's um, who's who's really built into the tournament. We've got the the, the, the rock of uh, of T- Talia, uh, Talia Blanchard at the back. We've got um, we've got the ever ever reliable uh, George Bykoff in the middle, and I think just um, just that, that 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 slight addition due to just just being smart about being smart about where they are in the tournament um, and just pulling Ray 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 Anderson to start um, to start this one ahead of. Eloise Northam. I think that's a really, really smart move by um, by the coach, and I think um, I, 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 I don't, I don't think it'll, um, it'll, it'll hamper us at all. As we see the referee about to get play underway, the Combank Paramatildas with the kickoff in the green and gold, going from left to right on your screen, as Bykoff looks for an ambitious shot from inside her own half but has gone out of play. I'm also joined on the stream today by the wonderful Anne O'Dong. As we see Australia on the attack early on, it looks like Bykoff is trying to win the ball in the penalty area. That's Harrison with the ball across. The ball back into the box by Ray Anderson, but out for a throw. And this is shaping up to be the most exciting contest that we've seen at this World Cup yet. How do you see it playing out? I see this really as the two top teams of the competition. The United States really did have a surprise result against Japan, but that just shows you just how good the combat fan Matildas have been in this tournament. I think this is a match where both teams will probably be trying to feel themselves out as the dress rehearsal to the final on Tuesday. So expect to see a couple of tactics so that as they feel each other out a little bit. Um, and I think in this match, really, the Combank Paramatildas are going to try and put a real statement of intent um, to get that psycholo- psychological advantage ahead of Tuesday's final. We can see already the work in the midfield being done by the Paramatildas. You can see Bykoff in particular, and also Laney Harrison really pressing high. They're not putting their foot off the gas whatsoever in this game against the USA. I think, Taryn, in this game, you can see that the US are a a different calibre of opponent in comparison to what the Paramatildas have faced during this tournament so far. They're very, very tight on the ball. They're very clean on the ball. And you can see that they've been playing together for a little while in terms of their training as the Paramatildas go forward. And Bykoff, or Anderson, apologies, attempts to win the ball back there, but it goes out for an American throw. Indeed, it's it's difficult to get a uh, starting five for the US. They've mixed things up quite a lot as Bykoff on the ball in the midfield here attempts to run past her player but runs into the brick wall of the US defence. The US have mixed their starting five up a bit more than the Paramatildas. The Paramatildas have been a lot more consistent game to game. Piney, how do you think that's going to play into this one? I think consistency is the key here. You know, you've got um, you've got a tournament. Oh, has Ray has a Ray, Ray has a quick shot. Um, you've got you've you, it, consistency of, of of a starting of a starting five and really getting to know the the combinations out there on the pitch. I think is crucial. So I think uh, I think the Paratillas coaching staff have done a really great job. And no doubt, as we've seen the. Matildas as a shot comes in from outside the box from the US, but very well kept from Caitlin Smith, as we've seen throughout this tournament. The Paramatildas yet to concede a goal, uh, and very much due to, at least in part, the work of the fantastic goalkeeping of Caitlin Smith and her backup, Holly Saunders. 
as the Paramatilda is looking to attack. It's been a really fast paced beginning to this game. We can see for the first time here the Paramatildas having to, to play a little bit deeper, I think, in all of the games that we've seen from the Combank Paramatildas so far. They have been pressing high and able to box their opposition in to the other side of the field. But in this game, you can see it's a very different tactical battle as Bykoff breaks here and she looks to get shot off but very well defended there by the united states and we know that they're going to be strong Anne. yeah um look in this one taryn you can see it's a lot more of a transitional type of game piney those are the ones that are real killers aren't they when you are having to go up and back and, and do those repeat sprints and those recovery sprints and um you'll see how it will impact both teams as the half gets on because at the moment, um, both of them are really probing. And like I said, it's much more of a transitional game than others where Australia has really dominated the possession and the territorial advantage. Bykoff with a free kick here. She's been known to score some long range stunners so far in this tournament. Bykoff and an excellent save there by the United States goalkeeper. Emily Lauritsen, that was bound for the top corner there, but was very well parried out. Chance not over though, with a corner and a throw. We've seen these long throws used to great effect throughout the tournament as it's launched into the box here. Harrison on the end of it, but well defended away. And the Paramatildas have to get back here, but the ball is kicked out for a goal kick. Piney, with this sort of game where it, it will be much more even and there will be many more transitions from attack to defence, it almost looks like, uh, to, to me, it almost looks like basketball where sort of the, the team with the ball uh, is able to have lots of space in front of them as the other team sort of backs off. Yeah, I, I, I actually, as um, as the, the the Americans come close, actually I, d I don't mind the, the the American tactic. They clearly they clearly watch previous um, Paramatilda's games, and and they're parking someone up right behind Talia in defence as a bit of a target, and that's that that causes real. Um, real indecision in a fullback so I, I don't mind that they've obviously done their homework of course and we see the us utilizing the rolling throw that is an option in cp football as bykoff breaks through here into the box for harrison and just wide laney harrison had a fantastic opportunity there but was extremely well marshaled by the us defender michelle cross and are we seeing the advantages here of, of these teams actually having watched each other now as the tournaments progressed yeah you can actually see that and that is what is going to be so interesting as these two teams play each other in this match are they going to show their hand completely as the US is on a break now? There's an opportunity here for the United States, but Caitlin Smith, such safe hands in goals. It'll take an awful lot to get past her. And I think what is also really quite relevant in this game is the two goalkeepers, Emily Lawrence, Lawrence and also Caitlin Smith. Um, Piney, how important is it to have two quite mobile goalkeepers as these two are to help uh, with the attack and, and also with the defence? Yeah, listen, um, it's 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 becoming more prevalent and um, and and it's extremely important when when it comes to CP, CP football to have a goalkeeper and um um and and you know and in in places where where some of the other sides were weaker. It was their goalkeeper, and um, and the US like like like, like the Paramatildas, we have a very strong goalkeeper, so it's going to be hard to break down. But there, yeah, that's um, it's it's a crucial role they play back there. 
as the US look to play the ball forward once more into the center of the park. They captain with the shot and she's scored for the United States. Annie Wicket, their captain, number three, has hit the back of the net here for the United States, but unfortunately it looks like there is a player down in back play here. We hope that she's okay. And talk us through what happened there. Yeah, look, Annie Wicket, she saw the space. Um, the Paramatildas tried to clear the ball uh, and in the... Oh, look, it's just coming through that it might actually not be a goal after after all. We'll, we'll see what the uh, the adjudication is. But it looked like uh, the Paramatildas had tried to clear the ball but were unable to do so. And Wicket has done what... Um, what Georgia Bykoff has done to many other teams and she looked for that long range effort but we'll see what the adjudication is as the play stops just for a moment. So we've just received word from the ground here that the referee blew his whistle before the shot was taken there by Annie Wicket so while the ball did find its way into the back of the net for the United States it has fortunately for the Combank Paramatildas, of course, but perhaps unfortunately for any American viewers that we may have today, uh, it is a no goal adjudication. Piney. Oh, that's that's a, that's a, that's extremely lucky for the Paramatildas. Um, I, I I I I can't say that that's that that's in, in very fair on the US, but uh, you know, the, the rest decision is the rest decision. So, um, so play on. Well, she'll go for it again here. The United States captain and into the box. But well saved that time from Caitlin Smith, who does manage to maintain her tournament clean sheet so far. By the skin of her teeth. Absolutely. I mean, the goalkeeper, Caitlin Smith, uh, from Perth in Western Australia. Now she will not be complaining one iota about that goal being disallowed and nor will any of the Australians watching the stream, I would imagine. It's a good warning shot for the Paramatildas. Uh, I think that makes them well aware of what Annie can do. And uh, hopefully this is um, the warning that they need to make sure that they close her down quickly. So just a score update, if you're just tuning in, there has been 11 minutes uh, gone in this game so far. Scores currently still locked at nil all between these two incredibly exciting teams. Now, this game, much anticipated, there will be goals in it, but both teams still feeling each other out, still trying to get a sense of the game so far. That um that 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 American striker up front is absolutely paying dividends for the for the, for the American at the mo for for America at the moment. It's just causing Talia to be so disconnected with the play. She really needs to be smart about her positioning here. As we see the United States on the attack again, ball just outside the penalty area, oh. and cleared away. The as the United States come forward once more with a long shot and just high that time. The player that was on the ball on the edge of the area that you saw just before was Katarina Gumarez. She is the top scorer for the United States so far in this tournament and is absolutely a danger player that the Paramatildas will be well aware of. And as we head into this drinks break halfway through the first half, how have you seen the half unfold so far? 
Yes, look, this is a good drinks break for the Combank Paramatildas after a pretty strong start where they were able to gain some territory and incursions into the United States half. They've been on the back foot for the last five minutes or so with lots of possession and lots of shots on goal for the United States. I think much like the Japan game, this will be a conversation that Kelly has with the players and maybe the instructions around getting some possession of the ball for a little bit, deny the United States it for a little while, have them do the chasing for five minutes or so just to get a foothold on the game and give themselves some time to be able to build up the play. At the moment, they're trying to go a little bit too direct, especially as a, a team like the United States that can counterattack so well. Piney, agree with Anne's analysis? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. I think that um, I think that uh, a, a, a tactic with that striker up front is for for in, indeed the goalkeeper to to mark that striker who's hanging around in the box, and then Vitalia to, to to push on a bit, and then we haven't we have that extra me, that extra 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 person in attack, and I think that because we seem to be attacking with two v three all the time, and two v three isn't going to work it. So I think we need to push more in attack and, and, and if we're ever going to score goals because at the moment it just does not look like we're going to, um, like we're going to break this, this, this American defence down. They've, uh, they've certainly done their homework and I'm, I'm, um, I'm a, little bit, a little bit nervous here, Anne and, uh, and Taryn, I've got to say. I've got to say, Piney, I'm, I'm sure. not actually too nervous because I think as the play restarts again, I'm not too nervous because of the fact that uh, Kelly has chosen to rest Eloise Northam, the other co-captain for this match. And I think when she's in the defence, she gives a different dimension to the Combank Paramatilda. So at the moment, they're probably going to have to try and work it out a different way. But I think uh, Eloise coming in back into the starting five for the final will give a different look and maybe something else that the uh, Americans might not be expecting. As the Paramatilda is on the ball here through Rain Anderson, although intercepted by the United States on the edge of the area, ball into the penalty spot. Still there for the United States. But well cleared away by that player, Talia Blanchard. An unsung hero, perhaps, as the Combank Paramatildas have racked up big score after big score so far in this tournament, but has been a key part of those wins as the ball drops to the United States player in the, in the penalty spot. And what a save by Caitlin Smith, although is unable to save the rebound and the United States this time do get their goal and unfortunately Piney it has been coming yeah it's it's I mean I, 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 I wow I hope the goalkeeper's okay because that's that's hard to take that's hard to take with a great save great save putting your body on and indeed, your face on the line, um, and then having it having it re rebound directly to them. It's 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 hard to take, but um, yeah, we're only down by one so far. So we got we got uh, that. There's plenty of room to go. There's plenty of room for movement. There's um, and we're looking to get some instructions from Kelly right now. It's good to see goalkeeper Caitlin Smith up on her feet. The first goal that the Combank Paramatildas have conceded so far in this tournament. And how do they bounce back? I think this one is now a test of character. They've been ahead from the very first minute of this tournament and for the first time they're behind. So I think what this comes down to is what is the leadership and hopefully the opportunity to actually try out some different strategies of how to actually chase the game. I think this is the opportunity as the play gets underway with Georgia Bykoff and Lainey Anderson. And the United States immediately intercept there and they threw on goal again. And that is a one-two punch from the United States of America. Another goal straight from kickoff. And unfortunately, about halfway through the first half, the United States leading 2-0 and 
That was a great intercept from the United States player. She really absolutely motored once she got onto that ball and she was quick to fire. And, and that's a bit of uh, the same medicine that uh, the Combank Paramatildas have inflicted on other teams and with uh, with uh, Georgia Bykoff uh, doing the damage in the other parts. I think one of the interesting parts of not having Eloise Northam in this lineup has meant that Georgia has to has had to play a much deeper role than she has in the first three matches. And I think that is um, one of the connectivity um, questions that Kelly has to try and work out sort of at half time. Uh, Chris, I really think this is an opportunity now for, for the girls to learn a little bit about themselves, about what, what are they going to do when they're behind in these situations and how do they fight back? Yeah, absolutely, Anne. I think um, I think now, now now you see some of the strategy come out, and some of the some of the the the, the real match play um, match play decisions come out because yeah, you do have those big decisions that need to be made, and you know, do you push that person for you? Do you do you you know do, do you commit one extra than you would normally commit in, in order to get that goal and 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 take some risks? So it'll be interesting to see what um, what what Bicop does here because um, something needs to change. We've seen Bykov play a deeper role at times throughout the tournament, particularly the second half against the Netherlands as a United States throw in is cleared. But from the beginning of matches and as the first half has drawn to a close, she scored many of her goals by playing as a midfielder, being up the field and being able to impact those opportunities. The comeback Paramatildas do seem to be losing a little bit for having her in defence, Anne. They are as another opportunity goes close for the United States, but Caitlin holds firm there. Looks like another call out for Cara, the physiotherapist, to have a look at Caitlin. I'm pretty sure she just tackled her with her hands, <laughs> which is outstanding. Outstanding by Caitlin. She's just seen the ball there and going, no, nah, sorry, guys, that's mine. And just grabbed it from the feet of the attacker. That is absolutely sensational. As a goalkeeper, sometimes you do have to have somewhat of a disregard for your own personal safety. And <laughs> Caitlin Smith showing that with that save has the United States on the attack again, but the ball is well marshaled out for a goal kick. This is the first time, Taryn, in the tournament that we've really seen the Combank Paramatildas quite isolated between their attack, midfield and defence. Uh, there was a moment there probably about two minutes ago where the whole team was behind in their half, and that's the first time I've seen that um, in all three matches. So I think it's um, a lot of really good structure is a long-range effort for the United States just goes over. But I think what the United States have done really well is kept their structure, um, made sure that they've had the numbers and the spaces that they needed to. And I think that's the uh, that's what we're going to have to figure out at half time, how to make sure that we can keep our structure and, and give ourselves the ability to attack as we play out the back to Georgia Bykoff. And you can see the US so quickly getting back in defence here, and it's really making it difficult for the Paramatildas to play direct and they're able to break again here the United States although cleared away by Blanchard. We seem to be very defense minded. You just saw the run as we were as as we were coming as, as we we're progressing up the field as the Americans take the throw. Into the grateful hands of Caitlin Smith there. Should be very pleased to get on the end of that one. Yeah, as I was saying, um, and the, the 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 run was sort of was sort of a defensive run by Ray Anderson, where where possibly you know it needed to be an attacking run, and she could have been used to to, to gain with that here on the right hand side, and and perhaps start an attack going forward to um, to to maybe feed. Feed Laney, Laney Harrison up front, but um, she's been getting no service this game. Absolutely none. 
If you're just tuning into the stream for the first time here, there has been 20 minutes gone in this game between the Combank Paramatildas and the United States of America. America 2-0 up. However, the Paramatildas not out of it yet. Still five minutes to go in this half and a whole other second half. And how can they turn it around? I think in this match, uh, maybe as the Americans go forward again. And attack again. And that's a goal there. Another goal for the United States. Unfortunately, just missed whether that was tapped home there. But the initial effort again from their captain, Annie Wicket, who had a goal ruled out earlier in the half. The United States showing all of their class, all of their quality, all of their speed here, Piney. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's, we've got to be very careful that we don't, um, we don't lose, even, even lose a bit of, a, a bit of self-belief going forward into the, in, into the final now. It's very, very important that we get on the board and get on the board very early because... As we have an opportunity yes. here, just drops to the feet of an Australian player there, but was so well played out the back from Annie Wicket for the United States. Led to another counter-attack and out for a goal kick. Yeah, I agree with you, Piney. I think in this one, um, it might be an opportunity in the second half to see uh, to give a couple of the girls another run. Um, it's been quite warm in Spain. It's been quite, quite warm in Salou, and quite a few of these girls have um, some a number of minutes under their legs. I'm talking of Talia Blanchard. Might like to see Matilda Mason come on for a bit of a run in the second half as well. Um, Ray Anderson has an opportunity here. Although blocked away by the United States, and they're on another counter attack here. And yeah, or, or I'd like to see um, if Nicole Christodoulou can get a full half as the United States have another shot on goal, but Caitlin Smith is there to collect quite easily and, and see if we can get oh, and going forward. This is another opportunity with the ball up forward for the Combank Paramatildas. I think you can see some of what we've been talking about on commentary here. Ray Anderson very isolated up front. Australia playing very defensive at the moment. Yeah, the United States have forced them into the defensive position, but that's where, like I said, in the second half, I'd like to see a couple more players and, and see um, if we can give others a little bit of a run and, and also rest um, a couple of the starting five for that final. Um, this is a great match, to be honest, for I think for the combat Paramatildas. Got to learn a lot about themselves in this one, um, not just tactically, but also how they deal with the situation mentally as well, going to a final. So I think there's lots of positive learnings that, that can come out of this game. Now, there was a substitute just off screen we have Charlize Tran, the 15-year-old from Sydney, coming onto the park, replacing Lainey Harrison as the United States looking to counter yet again. And the ball is out for a corner. And that's half time in Salou in Spain. In this final group stage game, the Paramatildas against the United States. The score is currently 3-0 to the United States and United States in women's football at any level, big, strong quality. What can the Paramatildas do from here? I think this is a good opportunity for them to regroup at half time. Uh, there, like I said, there was a lot of lessons learned from that first half. Uh, they started up really positively, uh, a couple of great looks at in behind the defense for the United States, but they adjusted really well and structurally they were quite solid defensively and then they got on top of the midfield. I think for Australia what they need to do is have a look at getting some touches on the ball, playing it around for a little bit and and giving themselves some, some time on the ball and taking some time away from the United States for a little while. I think in this game really 
there's the opportunity to have a look at some other players and it'll be interesting to see what Kelly Sturton does do at half time. But uh, I, I think this is a great, great game for them to learn ahead of the final, Piney. Yeah, definitely a massive learning curve. Um, there's 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 nothing like being being pretty comprehensively beaten to to, to be able to change that mindset and be able to, to to really to really test that mindset as well and test that positive mindset because you know we haven't been scored against and now we've been scored against three times. So, and I take what you say. It's a it's it's a real opportunity to regroup. Um, I, I know I've been harping on it a lot, but that um, that 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 striker almost marking our 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 goalkeeper that's just killing us that is killing us and we need to we, we need to get that sorted out we need to push Talia further up the field and so she can cut out that ball and then um, and then Caitlin just needs to take care of that because they're getting that ball in and they're they're a meter or two from the goals so uh, that's that that would be that would be number one for me but uh, I'm I'm in the Blue Mountains. I have absolutely no say on this on this game whatsoever, and it kills me. But uh, but it um, it's it's a it's a compelling match, Anne and Taryn. I, I'm, um, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I like that the United States have scouted uh, the Paramatildas and watched their first couple of games and seen the influence that Caitlin Smith does have on the team. It's not just the saves that she does, but it's also the positive possession that she has with starting off Australia's attack and. In, as you said, in man marking her and, and keeping her out of the game, they're actually reducing the kind of influence that she can have, but also reducing the time that Australia is out of their defensive half. And I think that's really starting to cause some issues all, all up. Well, a bit of a tactical masterclass here on show from the United States of America, but it's not over yet. 3-0 here in Sulu at halftime. It's been a pleasure to have your company for the first half and we'll see you shortly for the second.
Hello and welcome back to the second half of this group stage game between the Combank Paramatildas and the United States of America. Halftime score, three goals to nil in favour of the United States as the Paramatildas get off to a very encouraging start here. How has that ball not found the back of the net? An incredible piece of play there. Now, that play was instigated by a player that has just been substituted on. So there was one substitution at halftime, and that was Eloise Northam on for Georgia Bykoff. As the United States look to advance again, but shoot wide. Well, an action-packed start to this second half, Piney. How do you see it playing out now? Uh, well, a, a, a good sign by the Paramatildas to get 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 forward and, and have an early early effort on goal, but um, we're still getting dominated in that midfield. We've seen we've seen have two banks of a forward line and a midfield line uh, and a back line as the Americans come forward. And we seem to have no link in the middle. We really need to, 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 to get that link. As unfortunately, apologies for the stream. If you've been watching all of the Combank Paramatildas games and the Pararoos as well, you may be aware that sometimes the AI camera doesn't quite pick up the ball but of course we do our best and encouraging signs here from the Paramatildas to start the half as we see oh the United States attack stopped in its tracks there. Uh, how do you see this one? I like that they've started confidently and, and you can see that they're trying to um, really press high, which is what worked so well for them during this tournament. I think they need to keep that pressure on the ball. Uh, as that half progressed, USA had way too much time on the ball and, and not enough pressure on the ball carrier. So it's good to see that hassling is happening, that press is happening, and as a, the United States just break again. Into the penalty area once more, but a fantastic save again from Caitlin Smith, who it has to be said, despite the three goals conceded, has had an incredible game so far, Piney. What a superstar. Oh, Smith. She has she has absolutely done nothing bad for her reputation during this tournament. She has absolutely... Oh! As again. Another save there from Caitlin Smith, Piney. She is, she is covering herself in, acc in accolades here. She is... She has been one of the players of the tournament for the Paramatildas. Fantastic. Indeed, as we see Eloise Northam in the play there. The United States stopped again in the head tracks by goalkeeper Caitlin Smith. You can see already Eloise Northam making an impact in that midfield as she's on the ball again here beats her player with the ball into the box but into the grateful hands of american goalkeeper emily loriston the paramatildas putting on the high press here winning the ball back high up the field they'll be looking to do that more as the half progresses Anne. i think what they'll also be looking to do is make sure that if they can get the ball up there and keep it up there just to have the restart in a more advantageous position. I think part of the problem also has been that where the restarts have been in this game have been quite deep, which meant that it's not that many movements or that many phases of play that the Americans have had to um, undertake to be then in the Australian's half. So what I've liked in this uh, opening couple of minutes, this opening five minutes of the second half is we've kept it up in their their half, um, and forcing them to restart a little bit deeper than they have uh, when as Eloise just gets onto the ball and makes an interception again. And you can see in this half the substitute Charlize Tran, who came on 
in the latter stages of the first half, playing that Laney Harrison role up front as Eloise Northam gets the ball into the penalty area with one of those monster long throws, an absolute weapon so far in this tournament. The United States go forward again. And the ball into the side netting. Yes, Charlize Tran playing as that most advanced player. It looks like the Paramatildas have sort of gone to what looks like a 1-2-1 a one -one in this half, Piney. Yeah, a bit of a diamond. I like it. Um, sort of ne ne negating negating that, uh, that that American striker and sort of playing into it. But, uh, yeah, we just we, we can't lose in the midfield there. they got too many weapons. As we see there. The attack again there, the United States. They are an incredibly skilled team. And another shot, but well saved yet again by Caitlin Smith. Smith, having a futsal background, described as a brick wall in goals and one of the most skilled futsal goalkeepers that coach Kelly Sturton has seen. And you can see those attributes on full display there, Anne. What you can also see on display, Taryn, is the fact that the United States have really strong individual skills. A couple of times they've been able to use their turns on the ball just to get in and around the Australian defensive play. I think that's the first time really in the tournament that they've seen teams with really strong individual skills. I think Japan in their game, they were very good at connecting and passing and playing it out, uh, and letting the ball do the work as they say. But I think in this one, it's really that sort of X factor individual player that's, that's really getting um, in and evading the Australian defence. So it's going to be interesting to see how they look to counter that as a team as Annie Wickett again looks to receive the ball. And she's been one of those players whose movement's been fantastic on the ball to, to get those openings as Australia goes forward with Charlize. Annie Wicket for the United States, she's almost been the, the Georgia Bykoff-like player for them, winning absolutely everything in midfield as Northam has another one of those long throws, misses everyone and into the goalkeeper's gloves. Now, Piney, the United States, uh, as they have another attack into the box, although cleared, they are coming off a draw to Japan, which as a layman is watching this game is, is difficult to understand. Do you think that tactically perhaps Japan playing the ball to feet and playing much more technically, as we saw in the Paramatilda's victory over Japan, do you think that that maybe had an advantage against this United States team? Yeah, possibly, possibly. I just think that they've um, they've been a bit they've they've been a bit tactically better in this match. I think they've really um, they've 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 obviously done so much homework on as, the Paramatillas as Charlize comes close. That was a fantastic opportunity there for the young forward Charlize Tran. And an attempted long shot there from the Combank Paramatilda as well. We've seen those goals scored throughout the tournament. It's absolutely worth a hit there from Ray Anderson. But unfortunately on the counter-attack, as we've seen so many times this game, the United States, able to score, able to win the ball back. They're just so strong and so powerful, Anne. They are, and what they're also good at is, as we spoke about in the first half, is that transition ball, being able to get it uh, passed through the first phase and to quickly move it on um, to their forward half. And from there, they've got some great players who are making the most of it. And as you mentioned, Piney a couple of times um, up front, they've got a player basically just sitting on Caitlin, and that's because, of course, in this match there is no offside. So they're using those that to their advantage as they go for a corner, and it looks to have been played out. So uh, what they're doing is they're utilising the rules and playing quite smart, and as I said, neutralising one of our biggest weapons, which is Caitlin Smith and her ability to play out from the back. Yeah, and it wouldn't be such a big deal if it was seven aside. We can mark that. You can sort of, 
you can sort of give that up. But oh, Caitlin Smith close coming out of her line there and securing the ball extremely well. Yeah, but 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 essentially, she's she's the the the, the striker is taking out one of our players, and that's. That's that's twenty five percent of the of, of your on field players. The United States have another opportunity here, into the penalty area, and into the side netting, just wide that time. Apologies again to our viewers who may have missed the fourth goal. Again, if you have been a regular viewer of these games, you will be very familiar with our friend, the AI camera, and sometimes it doesn't pick those goals up. Although, as Australians watching the stream, might not be such a bad thing as the United States going forward once more. Able to recycle possession here and out for a United States throw in. Just a score update if you are tuning in for the th first time with 35 minutes gone in this game. The United States 4 0 up over the Combank Paramatildas. Looks like Caitlin is down again and physiotherapist Caravan Reich is coming out to attend to her. She's been battered a bit in this match. She's definitely had to face a lot more ball. Um, and overall, she's had to put her body on the line a bit more, um, making some good saves, including one earlier in the in the in the match where she she saved uh, really with her face. So I think this one, she's she's been feeling this match a lot more and and Hopefully um, she's she's going to be okay because she really is a crucial player uh, that the Paramatildas will need for that final. She certainly is not only incredible in goals, but an absolute weapon with her goal kicks. In fact, netting herself a goal in the first game against the Netherlands from a free kick. So let's hope that she is okay because she would be a very important part of this Combank Paramatildas squad heading in to the final on Tuesday, Piney. Yeah, you wonder whether it's um, whether it's time for, for Kelly to start thinking about um, about preserving some. Um, and I know this is this is this is bad to say, and I know that as an Australian, it 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 it, it makes me feel a bit uneasy in my seat. But maybe it's a start, time to start to preserve some of these starters and 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 maybe maybe look to look to you know maybe push this mat, match aside and you know give some of those some some of those you know the, the, those players who've been on the fringe for this tournament give them a give them a, a, a really red hot shot to 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 be able to show as Ann said as Anne said earlier just just who they are and why they they, they deserve a spot in the starting lineup um but in in, in so doing you know, saving the saving the legs and 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 possibly saving an injury, because I think I said it at half time. It's uh, it's it's not out of the realms of possibilities, guys. Now it's good to see goalkeeper Caitlin Smith back up on her feet, and a shout out to the physio team doing fantastic work over in Salou in Spain. Just on that point, Piney. How much do you think fatigue, especially in the second half, is playing into the result of this game? Now, the Combank Paramatildas have had a relatively unchanged starting five in all of their games so far. Ray Anderson for Eloise Northam being the only change to a starting five that we've seen throughout the tournament. The United States, on the other hand, have changed their starting fives up quite frequently. How do you see that playing out in this game? Yeah, um, uh, your yeah, player degradation is going to be massive, um, and and that's something that Kelly needs to needs to manage very closely, because yes, they do, um, especially especially players with cerebral palsy and acquired brain injuries, they tend to um, they, they they tend to you know um, get 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 tired faster, and um, and and that's something that's um, that's going to be crucially important looking forward to the final. 
as play gets underway here. Looks like a United States throw in. As an incredible long throw there from the United States. Again, the, the American Eloise Northam perhaps has absolutely launched that into our penalty area, but is well defended in the end and out for a Caitlin Smith goal kick. And the ball is played out now. Northam on the ball. As Piney pointed out earlier, it's a 3v2 at the back there. The United States always seem to have numbers, although the Paramatilda is on the attack again here and out for a throw. I think you have to give it to the US um, in this match. Um, you know, the power of uh, the CP football for women, this is the first uh, World Cup uh, hosted by the IFCPF. And the United States, much as they have in, in all forms of women's football, have been the standard bearers. They've been the leaders um, ever since sort of this competition began. And, and like Australia last in 2019, there was an Oceania AFC, uh, a talent ID camp, Piney, which some of the U Paroos boys came down and, and were helping out with. Um, and so this game is really starting to grow. And I think over the next couple of years, especially with the visibility of this tournament, not just here in Australia, but also in the United States, and we've seen some more teams come online over the next, uh, over the last couple of weeks, I think you're just going to start to see more, more nations really um, put some investment into the para space, which is going to be fantastic um, for women and girls. And in Australia, it's, it's almost 2 million women and girls who live um, with disability. And this is a fantastic opportunity for them. Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, the, 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 the equal opportunity for, 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 for men and women in the, in the, um, in the para space has been, um, has been something which has finally come to fruition. You know, but this is this is the first ever tournament of of of, of women's CP, and it's uh, it's. I, I just think I, 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 I take what you say. That's it's, it's just going to go from strength to strength because I think, you know, as the US push forward, sorry, Taryn. The ball in the grateful gloves of Caitlin Smith there. Apologies for a little bit of a delay there. Some technical issues on stream. As the United States makes another substitution. And absolutely, there'll be people watching this stream for the first time who have never seen CP football before or who have never, who didn't even know that it existed prior to this tournament. And that visibility is just so, so important, Piney. Yeah. And for, for them to have a, to have, to have an avenue and to have, to have a, to have something to strive for is, 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 is something that's super special. I know it's special because it's, I've, I've been a part of it as the Americans come forward again. They're just relentless in attack, the Americans. So good at winning the ball back in midfield and starting those counter-attacks, Piney. Yeah, I don't mind this switch either. Waxing this tactical change, actually, it happened in the last game um, and it definitely happened against Japan where Talia Blanchard was given a little bit more license to move further up the pitch and we saw that with that strong interception and then she went on a little bit of a run before laying off to Charlize Tran. I think if she can use her pace and like many of the girls, she's got an athletics background and if she can utilise that a little bit more, uh, I think that will 
uh, give some good transition and make the US answer a couple of questions just for a little bit. Absolutely. We've seen Blanchard's ability on the ball and on the dribble several times in this tournament so far. It'll be really interesting to see how she delivers against the United States today. That's very well defended again from the Combank Paramatildas. You can see the United States, how organized they are, the way they immediately get back into those blocks in midfield and then can immediately win the ball back there. And a ball into the penalty area, although Caitlin Smith yet again. Well, I was going to say stands tall, but in that case is able to dive on the ball, essentially at the feet of that American striker who, as Piney has pointed out several times, is standing right on her this whole game it's a tactic that's working very well for them as we see a substitution here honey one thing i've noticed you know, just the last couple of incursions with the american striker i've i've noticed she's not as mobile as her teammates and that might be one of the reasons why they've actually put up front do you think maybe it might be an idea if we actually counterattack that and, and get a Paramatilda goal side just in front of her? And that gives then almost, you know, almost the netball style of, of man marking for a little while. And then that might be able to release um, Caitlin a little bit and, and make her into more of a sweeper keeper kind of role. What do you reckon? Oh, that's a very interesting, interesting prospect. I, I would, I was saying, um, my, my my thought process was as the American as it goes out for I think a corner um, was that uh, I think Caitlin's got it covered. She's shown she's shown nothing. She she seems to be yes less 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 mobile as you said as the corner comes in. United States corner here from that far side drilled in to the near post and cleared away for another corner. I just think we've given her too much respect, Anne. I think we could have we we, we, we could have almost played with her and just negated her completely. You can see her on the ball now at that near post, although very well defended there by the Paramatildas, and out for a goal kick. So the I, substitution I... that occurred before uh, it was. Number nine, Ray Anderson coming off the field, part of the starting five today, and Nicole Christodoulou coming on in her place. As the United States break again and a shot from range that goes flashing past the post this time. Now, Nicole, it's just five minutes left in this game, and um, it will be interesting to see Nicole just put a little bit more pep in the step for the Paramatildas with uh, only about five minutes left in this match. Now, and I was going to ask what Nicole Christodoulou can bring to this Paramatildas attack because she has already scored two goals so far in the tournament. She's definitely added a different element every time that she's come on. Do you think that she can get one back for the Paramatildas today? I think so. I think what we've seen in this match is that foot speed and also speed on the ball as a long throw comes in. Onto the box. That's very well held there by the United States goalkeeper, showing fantastic awareness there to pick the ball up and very safe hands. Also strong tracking back there from Eloise Northam. Um, she was the one that made the throw and then she was the one to make sure that she could track back to at least force a corner instead of a quick break as the United States look to take the corner. Another one drilled into that near post, although cleared away. The Paramatildas look wise to that corner tactic now from the Americans. 
A captain's run, I think it's fair to say there, from El Hoyas Northam, one of the co-captains with Georgia Bykoff, who she replaced in this game. I think the last couple of minutes, Piney, what would you like to see? You've been in these positions many, many times before with the Pararoos, who shout out to them, who finished 11th in the men's World Cup tournament with a fantastic finish against Germany with a 2-1 win overnight. You've been in these positions many, many times before. What would you like to see in terms of what uh, the Combank Paramatildas look to get out of the last couple of minutes of this game? Well, it, it, it do, doesn't really matter whether you go down 5 nil or 6 nil, does it? And I think I, I, I would love to see, I would love to see, I mean, you see, I mean, to, to the right of your screen, look, there's two people. There's Caitlin and Talia, and they're both marking that one player who is not very mobile. I'd like to see both of them up on the halfway line. Maybe maybe Caitlin, obviously, a, a little further back, but they're not really going to get chipped. And then put it in her mind about what she's going to do as a striker. Because at the moment, we've got two people marking the one person, and it's just taking us out of the game. It's completely taking us out of the game. It's cracking ta- technical, tactical work by the Americans. And um, and is really annoying me because it's, uh, it's really quite good. It's 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 made the difference this game. It honestly has. Yeah, that numbers advantage in the midfield has really um, been something that they've utilised as uh, Charlize gets an interception off that throw. That numbers game really in the midfield, they've been able to play the best as Eloise goes for the long throw. But that will be something that Kelly will look at. Kelly will see that and Kelly will, um, will will identify that because if I was the States, I'd use that again in the final. As we push forward, maybe yes. for maybe Charlie's for Tran off, on the ball there into the box, Chris Gulu. And just wide there, Nicole Chris adding that extra element in front of goals after some fantastic work from the young Charlize Tran to get the ball into her. Well, there's not much difference losing 5-0 or 6-0, but it would be nice to, to get one back, 4-1, Piney. Yeah, absolutely. For confidence, for confidence leading into leading into the final, it's pretty it's pretty crucial we get we, we get one up because um, you can't help but take take a bit of an emotional battering after this. As the United well, States, as they've done all game, work the ball forward from midfield, but out for a Caitlin Smith goal kick. And that's full time here in the last group stage game in Salou. The United States 4-0 victors over the Combank Paramatildas. Now, a disappointing result for the Combank Paramatildas. This means that the United States finish top of the group, but there is still one more game to come. Tuesday, 8.45 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Australia will have their opportunity to avenge this result in the IFCPF Women's World Cup final. And how have you seen this result and how do you think that it'll affect the final on Tuesday? Sometimes in sport, they say that you've got to lose one to be able to win one. And when you have a team as strong as the United States, this is the kind of match where they will learn a lot from. I think the easier pool games that they've had, um, great for the confidence, but you don't actually learn a lot about yourself in a pressure situation. And today they really did have that. I think what will happen from here is the girls will, and Kelly and Charlotte will go back, have a look at the tape and, and see what they can pull out of it and, and come back quite differently for that match. What they have to make sure that they go away with is still very positive, still very confident. They've had three wins in this pool. They've scored a ton of goals and today they conceded their first goals, but it's not over and they've learned a lot about the United States themselves in this match. For sure. And Piney, do you agree with that assessment? Absolutely. 
absolutely and it, it will be hard to come back from this but i have no doubt that the that the the, the, the kelly and charlotte will will as as Anne said will, will, will take a really hard look at this at, at 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 the footage and 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 be able to tactically to tactically outthink the the, the united states yeah, you, yeah yeah the united states got the better of us tactically in this match but it won't i can't see it happening again because we're 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 a football background, so I think that we'll um, we'll, we'll we'll come back stronger from this, and we'll uh, and yeah, it will be hard to take, and, uh, and and certainly tonight will be a hard one to take as the, as as the players clap the crowd, but um, but we'll certainly come back with this bigger and stronger, and um, and and really test the Americans in the final. Absolutely, what and- I have to say I really like about it, Piney, is that. Uh, just seeing the players come off the pitch and this bright colors, the, the players actually look in really good spirits, as you can see also the coaching staff having a, a really good chat at the top of the park. I like the fact that they're in good spirits. I like the fact that they, they've had the disappointment on the pitch and you saw some of the girls with their heads down and um, they were having chats with one another and consoling one another. But as they were walking off, it looked quite positive and I think that's the kind of attitude we're going to have to take into that final against the United States, which, as we mentioned, again, is this Tuesday, the 17th of March at 8.45 Australian Eastern Standard Time. The United States taking on Australia in the first ever IFCPF Women's World Cup final. And both teams just with so much to celebrate with that final coming up. It's an incredible achievement to get to the final. This is the first time that an Australian senior national team has reached the final of a World Cup and it's going to be such a momentous occasion, Piney. Yeah, it'll be massive. It'll be massive. And um and Anna, what you were saying saying earlier, if you're if you're a if if you're a young girl sitting at home watching this and and a, a, a young girl with, with, with several palsy or acquired brain injury or just disability in general. And you're watching this, and you know you, you, you look at this and go, "This could be me. This could be something that I could strive for. This could be this could be me scoring that winning goal versus the US. This could be me winning the World Cup again." It's it does, but the the, the way that that changes changes a person's psyche is um, is is really beyond belief. And um, and and I just hope that that many many people are watching this, and that many many people get um get get inspiration from what these girls are doing because what they are doing in terms of football and in in this country is is they're treading new ground they really are treading new ground so congratulations and uh, i i and, and win lose or draw you know uh, the paramatillas and the pararoos are undefeated the footage that you're seeing there of the four goals that the United States scored in this game. No doubt the Australian coaching staff, Kelly Sturton and assistant Charlotte Ursel as well, will be studying this footage and making some adjustments for the final. And what do you expect to see on Tuesday? I expect to see a couple of adjustments from Kelly and from Charlotte. I expect to see that they're going to have a look at uh, the big spaces that were in the midfield in this game. And that was where the US really did their best work because the reality is when they were actually in the forward third, there wasn't that much variation in how they went about scoring their goals. What they did have a lot of variation is was how they were able to penetrate into that final third. So I think it's going to be a real conversation is about how do they make sure that they stop that middle third transition and that will give Caitlin the absolute best opportunity to do what she does best, which is stop goals. So I think it's about studying it, updating the tactics, but also keeping the confidence that they've um, rightly earned in those first three matches against the Netherlands, Japan and Spain. Caitlin Smith, what a superstar she is. And I think some words need to be reserved at the end of this broadcast for her. Now, it's never fun as a goalkeeper being on the end of conceding four goals, but she had just another outstanding game. Piney, how do you expect that that momentum carries into the final? I mean, 
in 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 terms of in terms of Caitlin and 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 the way that she's presented and the way that she's she's turned up for every single match. She has been she has been misconsistent in terms of her performances going throughout this tournament. So, um, in terms of in in terms of how how this will psychologically. You know, con- conceding a con- conceding multiple goals in one match, how this will psychologically uh, affect her? It won't have any effect on her at all. She'll just go out there and she will give that consistent number one top ten effort that she's been given the rest of the the, the, the whole tournament. And from a from a fellow Glasman to a Glas woman, I think that um, that uh, yeah, the uh, Australians Australians uh, you know, breed breed goalkeepers so. Um, I, I think um, I, th- I think she, you know she's a she's another testament to that. We love the goalkeepers indeed. And any final thoughts? I think I might have been muted for a little bit, but what I was just trying to say is we've got two top nations here in the United States and in um, Australia battling it out for the first ever uh, Women's World Cup title in the IFCPF. I think it's two fitting nations who have been at the forefront in terms of the advancement of para football um, in the world. And I think it's only fitting that they get the opportunity to play off for that historic first title. And I'm very much looking forward to it. We are all very much looking forward to that final. So we'll wrap it up here. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us once more. My name is Taryn Heddo. I've been joined by Chris Pine and Anne O'Dong. Another reminder, if you need one, that the gold medal match is still to come. It is still all to play for in this World Cup. Tuesday, 8.45 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, the USA versus Australia in the first ever IFCPF Women's World Cup final. Please join us then. It's been so fantastic having you with us now and see you on Tuesday.